Years ago, when I was much younger and stronger, I went on a pilgrimage to the Sinai Desert and climbed Mount Sinai, the mountain where the Bible says God appeared to Moses. To get there, we left Egypt by bus and traveled along a desolate, winding road through the mountains until we came to an old monastery, St. Catherine's, at the foot of Mount Sinai. Now, I don't know if the climb up Mount Sinai has changed in recent years, but years ago, you got up around three in the morning and took the steep, rocky trail up the mountain, following a guide with a flashlight. It was your only light in the dark. It was a hard climb. And by the time you reached the top, the first slim traces of dawn were beginning to appear. You could spend only an hour or two on the top of the mountain because the midday sun made the place blazingly hot. No shelter to hide from the burning sun. No water. Nothing grew there. Bare mountaintop. You had to go down. You couldn't stay there. Whenever I hear the story of the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain, I think of Sinai. The silence. The emptiness. The limitless view of space that you have from there. This doesn't belong to you, it seems to say. This belongs to God. This isn't a place of comfortable beauty where you can get up and take your camera and take pictures to your heart's content. You're in the presence of another here. Take up your shoes. This is holy ground, God said to Moses from the burning bush. But in the story of the transfiguration, Jesus takes his disciples up the mountain. Lord, it's good that we're here, they say. Now, I don't think they were expressing physical joy as much as wonder that Jesus had taken them into the mystery of God. His garments are shining like the sun. They can't take it in. It takes their breath away. They have to close their eyes. But they're looking for more. Jesus has taken them into the presence of God and their whole religious tradition has come alive. So what does this story mean to us? Do we experience it at all? Think about the experience of prayer. When we pray, we lift our minds and hearts to God. We go beyond what we see here and now. Let us climb the mountain of the Lord. Let's stand in his holy place, one of the Psalms says. And that's what the disciples did. What do we say to God, they asked Jesus, on the mountain? When you pray, Jesus says, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We come before the infinite God. We should not even be near him, but we call God our Father. We call the one who made heaven and earth our Father. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The disciples came down from the mountain and then they went on their way with Jesus, our gospel story says. But they needed that time, the time beyond here and now, that time on the mountain, that time of prayer. And so do we.